This is John, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17, 31b through 35. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. And during supper, Jesus, knowing all that the Father had given, all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answers, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet and had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you, should, you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. My brother-in-law, Michael, is recently retired from 25 years as a police officer. And to celebrate, to commemorate, to come to terms with all the hard work he has done, He is hiking all 2,650 miles of the Pacific Crest Trail, (laughs) all the way from our southern to northern borders. Today, he is on day 19, and yesterday, he hit 300 miles. I'm pretty impressed. It is very cool. Mike is sending various photos and videos, and it is pretty amazing to watch, to witness this from the comfort of my own home. Right? Right. (laughs) This is a physical achievement, and it really does show his mental stamina. So one night, Mike stayed at a hotel off the trail that included such luxuries as a shower and an indoor toilet. From this stop, he sent us a really memorable, really yucky photo. 
a sink full of filthy black water. Michael had washed out his socks after something like 76 miles. Oh, it was gross. And my dad had the best response. Buy new socks. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Mike washed them and let them dry, and he wore them again. Don't worry, he will be getting new socks in the resupply boxes that my sister is sending out to him. But until then, it is wash and wear. <laughs> Mike's socks really make me think about Jesus washing his disciples' feet in our gospel lesson tonight. Think about it. They have been walking for miles from town to town on dusty paths shared with animals. <laughs> and the footwear of the time was sandals. And after all that walking and dirt and whatnot, Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Jesus is their rabbi, the one they left home and career and family to follow. These men revere and honor him, and he bends down to perform a lowly task that house servants usually did. Certainly not the guest of honor, not the revered teacher. This is why Peter objects to Jesus washing his feet, because he really believed Jesus was above such menial tasks, even though those tasks were necessary. But in classic Peter fashion, he misses the point. <laughs> Jesus is not giving these men a pedicure. It's much more basic a cleansing of the grime they carried for a while now. By the time Jesus is done, I'm sure that basin must have been filthy. In washing their feet, Jesus reveals exactly the kind of God he is. Jesus is the God who touches our calloused places. Jesus is the God who doesn't grimace at our grime. Jesus is the God who cleanses and refreshes our dusty souls, even though we are bound to get them dirty again. Peter, the disciples, their feet will be dirty again in no time, right? After this foot washing, they are not transported to a sidewalk. <laughs> they don't suddenly own socks and shoes. They're putting their sandals right back on. Their worn and torn footwear goes right back on those clean feet, refreshed by Jesus. Jesus washes their feet even though he's got to know that they're bound to get dirty and dusty again. Wash and wear. Martin Luther knew about this cycle of cleaning and refreshing and dust. As a young man, Luther never achieved the perfection in his behavior, in his thoughts, or in his faith that he expected of himself. Eventually, he, became, he came to believe that only our God is perfect. We created ones, we are being made perfect in the power of the Holy Spirit. Luther taught that eventually and eternally, we will be without sin. In the meantime, in this life, we remain sinners, but because of God's love and grace in Jesus Christ, we get treated like saints. We never lose completely those grimy, less than impressive places in our minds and hearts, but we are washed clean by Jesus anyway. Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, God in the flesh among us, shows us who our God really is. The one who perpetually cleans us 
loves us, forgives us. In bending down to wash feet, Jesus shows that the dirt and dust doesn't matter to him. The disciple, the person, you matter to Jesus. Jesus washing feet is, I think, a fitting bookend to the dusty start of Lent when we receive the ashes on our foreheads to remind us that we are dust and to dust we shall return. After these 40 days, we have ended up where we started. As God's beloved creation, made from dust in the image of God. And so shall we remain. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. You are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let God deliver him, since he delights in the Lord. Yet, you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouths of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. 
all you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast in worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it.